Hello everyone, this is Tom Fox and I'd like to welcome you to this episode of the FCPA Compliance and Ethics Report. Today it's my distinct pleasure to have Luis Ramos, the CEO of the network, join, join me for this event. I recently heard the ha had recently had the opportunity to hear him speak and he talked about uh, some uh, concepts that the network has used to come up with a fabulous product in the GRC and Compliance and Ethics Suite and also some pretty exciting news uh, about the company and some of the uh, kind of kudos it's received over uh, the past year. So uh, I asked him to come on and he was able to take some time from his schedule. So with that introduction, uh, welcome Lewis. And uh, if you, uh, there might, might be some folks uh, out there who really are not aware of the network. So maybe you could tell us about yourself and uh, the network. Sure, Tom. Thank you. First, let me say uh, what a pleasure it is to uh, get a chance to speak to you again. Thank you so much for uh, an opportunity to chat with you about what we do and also about the overall governance, risk, and compliance space. Um, the network is a 32-year-old company, Tom. We've been around for a long time. We, uh, we're actually the first pioneers of the whistleblower hotline uh, back in the early 80s. Um, but over the last number of years, what we've seen is really a, a dramatic change in our business. Um, you know, when we started, there were really very few organizations that even had a hotline. And then in the early 2000s, what you saw was with the advent of Sarbanes-Oxley and additional, you know, uh, uh, regulatory changes, uh, just about every company had one. But as we grew our customer base, and today we have about 3,400 customers or so, uh, what we kept hearing from them was, we got all this data, we have all this stuff, but we don't really have any way of making sense of it, and we don't really have any way of, of turning that data into information that we can use to really manage our compliance programs. So our, our clients kept saying, you know, we've got data siloed all over the place, we've got all kinds of, of, of data that we can't make heads or tails of, we wish that somebody could help us figure out a way to bring all that stuff together, break down those silos, and help us make some better decisions so that we can help our companies be more effective. And so, so that's essentially what the network uh, uh, undertook back in 2009, 2010. We started building our GRC suite that is intended specifically for the ethics and compliance officers and the ethics and compliance space. And so today we have leveraged those historical hotline uh, and whistleblower service products uh, with uh, new technologies and software that really help our companies, uh, or our client companies rather, uh, get their arms around all this data and and put in place uh, a mechanism for being able to to have the right kind of you know, ethical culture and uh, and compliant uh, organization. Uh, I took some notes in your talk, uh, and I really want to get this right, so I'm going to go to my notes here. You said a couple of phrases that I thought really uh, uh, kind of summarized, integrated, and explained to me as a compliance professional what you guys. Uh, have in this space, and you used a couple of phrases. The first one was continuous evolution process, and the second was protect, detect, and correct. Uh, so can you explain the, the uh, you had a fabulous chart which showed the integration of all of these components. Uh, you had manage policy lifecycle, educate and certify, detect issues and incidents, manage investigations and correct and protect. Can you explain how, how all of that works in your system? Yeah, absolutely, Tom. Um, so as I was mentioning before, we're having all these conversations with our with our customers, talking to analysts in the space, you know, talking to folks who are who are experts, and and we kept dealing with the same issues over and over. We need to create a logical construct for how to attack these seemingly you know uh, 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 impossible to to, con to attack issues. And so um, we saw two things there. We saw that that just about everything that we were doing fit into one of these three buckets, into this concept of protect, meaning let's figure out a way that we can prevent things from happening in the first place. How do we ensure that the organization has the right policies, procedures, uh, you know, standards of conduct and behavior in place? And how do we also make sure that employees know how to use that information in their everyday lives? Because you know, all companies are required to have a code of conduct and they post it on their website. The question is, do employees really access that code to make decisions day in and day out about how they're going to behave. And so the protect component was really about helping companies set the standards of behavior and then helping them um, train and educate their employees so that those employees can apply those standards in their daily work lives and their daily business lives. So protect was really about helping the company prevent malfeasance. 
But then we also know that even you know the best run organizations can have can have gaps in execution. The the reality is is that is that when you look at total quality management and Six Sigma and all the different disciplines in the manufacturing world, their goal isn't zero defect. It's impossible. Their goal is to reduce defects to a very 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 small component. And so one of the ways that we acknowledge the fact that defects, you know, do occur and can occur is to have this concept of detection. So when a defect occurs, the most important thing is to identify that quickly and to correct it. So detection, that next piece, was really about the tools and, and services that we can offer customers to help identify issues very quickly because the faster that you identify an issue, the more likely you are to control or to manage or mitigate the risks associated with that issue. So correction, if, if, de- if protect is about policies and training, then detect is all about um, ways of identifying those issues. So hotlines and helplines fit into that, but so do surveys and assessments, uh, particularly compliance risk assessments where you can go identify what your greatest risks are and address those. And then the last component that we envisioned in this framework was the correct component and and think of correct as remediate. Think that you're really talking about how do I, once I identify an issue, not only address that issue but address the underlying root causes of that issue because the problem that cropped up in Wichita could happen in Omaha if we don't correct the underlying root causes. And it could be a control gap or deficiency. A deficiency. It could be that you have a management problem. So um, our correct components are really about incident management and a module that we call CAPA, which stands for Corrective Action, Preventative Action, and that's really the remediation module. That's where you open the post-investigation correction processes. And so what we learned in this is that our, our industry is moving so quickly and evolving so quickly that if we do not continuously innovate, we are not going to be able to solve the problems or help solve the problems that are that are facing our client companies. Um, in the in the session where you heard me speak, you know, one of our our, our speakers uh, came from the corporate executive board, and he was talking about the pace of change in 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 corporate America and how often. Uh, organizations are having to deal with those changes. Well, that pace of change that is impacting corporate America is also making it very important for companies like the network to make sure that we are continuing to innovate and add new feature functionality so that the problems that don't exist today uh, that we don't even understand that will be commonplace tomorrow, we're prepared to handle those or to help our customers address and handle those in the future. So uh, in recap, you know, the concept of protect, detect, and correct was really a framework uh, that we tried to create. And then within that framework, we built the entire GRC suite or the suite of applications that will help our clients deal with, uh, with the critical issues facing their organizations from an ethics and compliance standpoint. And certainly from my perspective, more kind of a legal angle and a technological angle, uh, you said a couple of things that I think are very significant. The, uh, the Department of Justice would say... Uh, 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 prevent, detect, and then remediate, and you clearly tied that to the correction. But uh, the thing that I always tell people, no matter what my talk is, is you have to document, document, document. And it seems to me your system allows for not only the documentation of any incident, but the recall of that document, uh, if not on a moment's notice, certainly in a reasonable amount of time frame. That's important for the companies, but for someone like me, who the Department of Justice might be talking to, to be able to call and uh, someone at a company and recall that data is absolutely critical. Yeah, Tom, that's a very good point. And, you know, the the notion of document, document, document is really built in through the entire GRC suite. Um, we have a very robust audit trail that uh, that is that is inside of the application so that what employees access and see and what they certify to and attest to uh, you as or the client companies can easily pull up uh, one of the other things that we've done which we find very unique and and if you'll permit me to back up a little bit you know we believe as an organization that our employees are our greatest assets and and that you know in the in the knowledge economy where your where your you know business essentially walks out of your doors every single day because it's in the heads of your of your you know employees and and of their colleagues. Those employees are extremely valuable to us, but 
they are also a source of great risk if those employees don't know what to do or how to do it or they're not properly trained, educated, they don't know expectations. And so as we designed our solutions, what we felt is that in the, in the GRC space, almost all the solutions that existed prior to ours coming out were focused on the back office. They were focused on the, the you know, uh, training manager or the the IT security manager, the folks who are really your your you know, very small percentage of your employee population. These are the people who are conducting investigations or managing your rules and regulations. But the reality is is that the greatest risks come from an uneducated or informed um, workforce, and so you really have to target a hundred percent of your employee population with this information to ensure that you can have a, an employee uh, workforce or, or an employee population that will be able to behave in the way that you want and expect them to behave. So our system was built with this in mind and, and so what we do is we provide a very user-friendly interface but behind the scenes all of the things that those uh, associates, employees, uh, you know, partners, whatever you call them in your business are doing um, is being tracked. So as an example, if I took a, a, a training, I can tell, you know, when I went to that training, how long it took me to take the training, how I scored in various components, examinations, et cetera, et cetera. I can see, so if I've taken the same training over the last three years, I can see what version of that training I took every single time. So if the DOJ ever comes knocking on your door and says, I'd like to know what Joe Smith did, and when he did it, and what version of the policy he saw, we can show them, here are the versions of the policy that existed in time, here's what version Joe accessed, here's what training Joe took, here's how Joe certified and attested that he had no disclosures to make, or that he did have a disclosure, and here's what we did about that disclosure. So all those components are tied together, and what we've done is created a, a view into Joe's compliance health. So as a, as a compliance professional, I can pull up that employee or that associate and look at them and say, show me a profile of Joe. How many policies has he attested to or certified on? How many trainings has he taken? Has he ever been named in an incident report? Has he ever been involved in an investigation? Um, has he had any allegations made against him or her? What was his ethical survey score? Um, was he part of a risk assessment that we've done over the last six months, 12 months, 18 months. And so that's the, that concept of documentation is not only built into the system, but is also accessible in relation to that employee or that associate. So I can now see whether or not that individual is, is actually um, a risk to me. And if he is, then I can take further actions to either help train him or to help understand why there are risky behaviors that are emanating from him. It really sounds like you're moving to what I think is, think is the next evolution of a compliance program, which is to move from prevention to almost prescri proscription, where you take the information you have in your system and you're able to identify an issue before it becomes a full-blown defect or what I would call an FCPA violation and deliver a resource to try to remediate that specific issue. Because uh, and that really where I think where I think it's going. Um, I I completely agree with your assessment of where of where the industry is going, and I think it's going this way because it needs to go this way. What what we see is that is that you know the typical compliance department is still a relatively small part of the organization. So you've got, as I mentioned earlier, all of this data out there, all of this information. And and even though we are helping our client companies bring it all together under one uh, sort of central repository and you're no longer seeing the same siloed information, the reality is is that many of our of our ethics and compliance professionals either don't have the time or don't have the background to do a lot of this analysis. So they're still seeing a lot of information or a lot of data that they cannot convert to information. So this is what machines do very well. They find patterns and they are able to bring those patterns to light. So one of the visions that we have for our suite is to utilize all of this data that we have and have our business rules engine, which are essentially built into the application itself, start to comb through or crawl through that data and find patterns for us. And once they find patterns, then they can 
point out those patterns and we have a our, the concept that we have for our, our whether it's an employee or a compliance manager is that you have a wall much like your Facebook wall or like your LinkedIn wall where you see messages and our vision is that our crawlers would find these patterns and then put something on your wall that says hey Tom you may want to go look at this at this uh, business unit or you may want to go look at these couple of employees because there seem to be some odd patterns of behavior that require a further look. Now, when you investigate that, you may find out that nothing wrong occurred, but what we're trying to do is give you some some better information about where you ought to be spending your time, because you can't look at everything all the time, and so this whole notion of targeting your activities based on your risks is crucial and is, is You've often shared, uh, when I hear you speak about SCPA and the DOJ guidance, that's really one of the key components, right, is a risk-based approach right. to compliance, focusing your efforts in the areas that you have the greatest risks. And so what we're trying to do is help our client companies identify those risks in automated fashions so that they can be more effective with limited resources, which is unfortunately one of the realities of being a compliance professional. You're often, you know, you got too many things to do and not enough time to do it in. And probably not enough money for the resources you want. Exactly right. Yes, not enough money until uh, until something goes wrong, right? And then right. all of a sudden, pocketbooks open and if you get a monitor, and one of my favorite quotes from you is, uh, you know, monitors have unlimited budgets and they exceed them. So, <laughs> right. so we'd like to help companies address these issues before they become uh, so costly, both in terms of, of dollars, but also in terms of reputation and just business distraction. When somebody is try essentially running your company for you and you're no longer in control, it's pretty hard to, to do business that way. Absolutely. Well, let me change the subject just a little bit because I think uh, the, uh, the network received quite a uh, if not an award, certainly recognition last year for something called a Forrester Wave GRC platform, if I've got that right, uh, and um, that is really not something that uh, I knew a lot about, but it, within the technical industry, within the tech industry, I think that's really a huge acknowledgement. Could you explain uh, what that is, what the network did to get it, and, and why it's so significant for the GRC space? Yes, thank you, Tom. Um, so yeah, we actually were, were notified of our inclusion in Forrester's uh, GRC wave uh, just a few months ago at the very beginning of 2014, but the efforts uh, for the evaluation really occurred in the latter part of 13. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, as we spoke to customers and we started to understand their challenges and, and some of the areas where they needed assistance, we set out to build out a suite of applications that would work together uh, as one uh, sort of integrated platform. We call it the GRC suite. Um, it has the components that I mentioned earlier, policy, training, uh, you know, issue detection, uh, incident management, CAPA, and uh, all sits on top of a reporting platform. And so we started the process of building this out back in 2010, and we had there were a lot of, of, of Temptations, I would say, uh, to shortcut that process, to you know, buy pieces and try to integrate them, or try to co cobble together a solution from from disparate components. Um, but we chose not to do it that way. Excuse me, because our fundamental value proposition was integration. That without a single integrated view into the world, you really were just perpetuating the existing problems. And so we set about to do that. in In early 2013, we finished the last two components of the suite. So we started rolling out pieces in 2010 and through 11 and 12, and in the first quarter of 13, we rolled out employee surveys and assessments integrated into the suite. Um, Forrester is a is an analyst firm, and they follow a number of different spaces, and one of their spaces that they have a concentration in is governance, risk, and compliance. They've been publishing waves um, for a number of years that essentially help client companies evaluate uh, vendors and evaluate technology solutions in the space. And so when they'd been following us for a few years and they'd been following our progress and when the final component of the suite came out, they asked if they could see it and they asked for some pretty unfettered access into it. Uh, we granted them that and at the end of that process they invited us to participate 
in in an, uh, in an evaluation. They evaluated literally you know dozens and dozens of companies. There are literally hundreds of companies who play in the GRC space. And Forrester ultimately chose 19 companies out of the hundreds that exist out there to include in their wave. And that is, they were they were uh, providing a, the marketplace an evaluation of the top platforms in this space. Uh, they chose to do one integrated GRC wave, meaning that all different types of GRC providers are in there. You've got IT GRC, folks are typically focused on, on information technology areas and they're really more focused on password security and data security and, and information security. You've got audit GRC in there, and you've got a number of platforms that are more focused on the, the accounting practices of an organization. But you also have compliance GRC, and we are you know, one of only two uh, platforms that were included that play in the compliance space. And as Forrester looked at all the various use cases, they also provided feedback to their customer base. It said that if you want to use one of these platforms for compliance, the interaction with the employees are much more important than if you're using it as a back office system. So they gave the the customers who would be utilizing this uh, tool to evaluate their, their potential uh, vendors a different weighting for the compliance space than they did for other spaces. And when you looked at that weighting, we came out as the top uh, provider in the compliance, uh, who focuses on compliance using that weighting. So it was a great honor for us to go from really, you know, just starting a uh, this project back in, in 2010 to now being considered one of the top platforms in the world, really, uh, that d delivers these services. So it was a great accomplishment for our product development and, and, uh, and engineering teams. Um, but it was also great validation of the overall uh, strategy that we've been following uh, for the last few years. So we were very pleased and very appreciative of the inclusion in that uh, in that Forrester wave. Well, congratulations. Quite an accomplishment for you and your team. Uh, Louis, uh, we're uh, uh, at the end of our time, but I wanted to ask if uh, any of our listeners wanted uh, information on the network. Uh, do you have a website or other location they could go to? Uh, we do, Tom. Thank you. The uh, The website is www. T is in Thomas, N is in Nancy, W is in work, I N C dot com. So that's T N W Inc. dot com. Um, from that website, you can uh, hit one of the contact us forms. Uh, you can take a look at all of our product offerings. Uh, you can see all the things that we're doing, and uh, and we also, you know, are starting to provide some guidance into our roadmap and some of the things that are coming in the future. So, uh, so that's a great place to go and, uh, and learn a little bit more about who we are and what we do. Well, I really appreciate you taking the time uh, to visit with me today. Uh, this is Tom Fox, and I uh, hope you enjoy this episode and look forward to visiting with you again.